One time I can make this rack, for example, this could be uh, Costa Rica in the summer, this could be Maine in the winter, and that one over here could be Pennsylvania. I could make this one Pennsylvania in the winter and Pennsylvania in the summer, changing the photo period, changing the temperature. Everything is geared up in the back with a, a timer for the light, timer for temperature. We can make temperature constant, we can move temperature all around. The idea is, Remember, no species occurs in a vacuum, and no, it's only, it's very, very rare that you have a, one species at one spot. That's that's evolutionarily kind of um, a death sentence because yeah. no place is stable over the long term. That's why all your insects still have wings. It's very rare to find an insect without wings. Why? Because those wings let it hit the road when environment changes and find a new spot. So. What we asked back in the 70s and early 80s were questions about how does a species that live in Pennsylvania also live in Alabama or Florida or also live in Canada? They're the same species. They're clearly not the same offspring to the same female. They spend time in different environments. How do you tease that apart? And what we found is, is there are certain things that are plastic and there are certain things that are genetic. So they've evolved certain amount of, of ability to adapt, and that's genetically determined. And that's the game that we played with this. And so when we moved our research into Costa Rica, it was no big deal. Suddenly I could make Costa Rica here and I could bring back animals that nobody even knew what they were, what the name of them might be. I brought them back as eggs, not knowing who they were, and I was able to rear them in here because we mastered the idea of just bringing things out of the lab, out of the stream, and into the lab. Most recently, we've set this thing up to run temperature experiments and toxicity experiments. So the, all of the upgrades occurred because we were paid to study how thermal pollution, hot water out of a power plant, affects a river. So we still have power plants here that operate by dumping their hot water into the river to the point where life as we know it needs to leave that section. It's not, it's no longer, it's too warm for that. And so as they've upgraded over the last 40 years and put in cooling towers and stuff, you see less and less of that, but they still have a thermal effluent. The question is, is under their normal efficient economic model, what's the environmental impacts of that? So these graphs here will show you how we've mimicked the operation of, of, a, of a power plant. Nighttime,